Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today I'll be showing you how to create this timeline using HTML and CSS. Okay, so we can see here this timeline is going to be responsive and it uses CSS grid for the layout. Alright, so I've got some sample data in here which is actually real information or events related to my YouTube channel. As we can see here, I published my first video on August 30, 2017 and it was about a client server sockets app in Java. But enough of that, I'm not going to go into the detail of each event of my channel but if you do want to download um, the code for this timeline, you can do so down below in the description. So. Let's head inside this tab right here and begin from scratch to create what we just saw. So going inside the HTML for this page, okay, we can see here I've just simply linked up a CSS style sheet. So we're going to be doing uh, each component of the timeline one by one uh, and that involves both the HTML and the CSS. So to start us off, let's create a new div right here in the HTML called timeline. So this timeline div is going to be the main container for the entire timeline. So if I go in uh, inside the style now, let's apply some basic styles to our timeline. But first, I just want to add a background color to the body and that will be uh, just the decode green being 009578. So now let's head down here and target the class of timeline, which we just created and Let's give this a margin of zero and auto to uh, horizontally center our timeline. We can say max width and set this to be 750 px. Let's give this some padding of 25 pixels. We're going to be displaying this as a grid. Okay, we're going to be getting back to the grid very shortly. But for now, let's move on to just applying a font family of let's just do our Fira Sans and then Sans Serif as the backup and a color of white. So now if I save this and go back in the browser, we can see I have nothing visible, but in the inspector on the right side here, we can see we have the timeline, we've got the padding applied to it, and of course it is centered. So now let's work on the grid. So as we can see here in the example, we basically have three columns in our grid. We've got the first column right here, which is a timeline component containing the date. Then we have the, uh, the uh, second component or the second column, should I say. This one here relates to the actual middle, the, um, the middle bar of our timeline. And the last column is of course some text. Um, and of course, these will swap around as you go down the timeline. All right, so that being said, we basically need a grid with three total columns. So to achieve that, let's go back in the HTML or in the CSS. And we're going to say under the grid here, we're going to say grid template columns. Okay. So here we're going to say one FR, then three pixels, then one FR. So basically we're saying right here, let's make two equal width columns on the left and right side. Then in the middle for our bar, let's make this three PX wide. So if I save this and go back in the browser, we can see, um, you know, we have that little grid icon right there somewhere, but as we add content to the grid, we're going to see how the grid looks. But for now, we've got the grid set up. So let's go back inside the HTML now, and we're going to be working on one of our grid, sorry, one of our timeline components. So uh, we need to create inside the timeline now, uh, the top, uh, the top left component containing the date. So we can make right inside here, uh, a new div with a class of timeline underscore underscore components. Okay, so inside here now we can specify another div and this div is going to contain our actual date. So we're going to say timeline underscore underscore date. So now we can say, for example, August 30, 2017. If I save this and go back in the browser, we can see we get something like this. All right, so the problem here is, as we can see, we've got this whole column to fill, but the uh, the date is on the left side. So by default, our dates are going to be on the left side, but let's add a modifier class to this timeline date to push it to the right side. So let's copy this and paste it, then say dash dash right. So now we're going to be using CSS to push the text on the right side 
if our um, if our class exists right here. That being said, let's apply some CSS styles to the timeline component class. So inside the CSS, let's target the timeline underscore underscore components. And for this one, it's going to be simply just margin 0, 20px, 20px, and 20px. This means 0 on the top, right is 20, bottom, and then left. So basically everything but the top is going to be 20px of margin. Let's save this right here and go back in the browser and we can see the text is now slightly pushed down due to, or sorry, um, it's actually not moved, but it's, it's, um, it's actually moved to the left or the right a little bit due to our margin. Okay, but we need to now target our timeline dates class to push it to the right side. So we're going to say right down here, timeline underscore underscore date dash dash right. And for this, like I mentioned, we're going to say text dash align and make this right. Let's save this and go back in the browser, and we have this right here. Now, obviously, for our um, for our right side text like this, for example, we need to simply just not specify our class. So we're going to get to this very shortly um, or later on. But we can see here for this particular you know span or this div, we don't have that class specified, of course, giving us the left aligned text. So let's move on now to the next component. This one here is going to be the middle bar. So going back in the HTML, let's specify a new div inside here called timeline underscore underscore middle. So for the middle, uh, you know, for, for middle components, it's basically just going to be our single white bar. Okay, so let's save this right here and go inside the CSS. And we're going to be styling our middle bar. We're going to say timeline underscore underscore middle. So for this, we can just say uh, something like uh, position and make this relative. Okay. Now, the reason why we need this position relative is because we need to then, uh, if I go back in the example, we need to uh, set a absolute positioning for our circle. So the reason for this position relative is going to be uh, is going to be shown very shortly. Okay, but for now let's just leave that right there. I'm going to say also a background of white, just like this. So now, if I save this and go back in the browser, we get this white bar pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so now let's move on to our circle, uh, giving us the point of the event. So for this, let's go back in the HTML, and we're going to be specifying a new div inside here. It's going to be called timeline underscore underscore point. So now, for this timeline point, if we go back in the CSS, we can start styling it up. So we're going to say timeline underscore underscore point. So here, we're going to give a position of absolute. So combining this absolute and this relative as the parent of the point, um, it allows us to then say a top of zero and a left of let's just do 50%. Okay, so we're going to see what this produces right now, but I want to add a width here of uh, let's just do 15px and the same goes for the height. And lastly, let's give this a background of red. So let's just uh, let's just stop here and see what this produces. I'm going to save this and go back in the browser, and we can see we get this right here. So we can see that we have this in the top of our parent, this timeline. It's right up the top there, and it's slightly to the right. So uh, the reason why it's on the right is due to our uh, due to our left of 50%. So to make this centered. We need to now just say transform and we just say inside here translate x then say negative 50%. So now by combining the left of 50 and the transform of translate x and then negative 50 back in the browser it is now centered. So now it's going to be quite easy to simply change this background to be a white and add a border dash radius here of 50% to make it into a circle. Save this and go back in the browser, and we have something like this right here. Okay, cool. So now, let's move on to uh, specifying the text on the right side here. So for this, we need to create a new timeline component. So I'll copy and paste this right here on the bottom. But the difference here is that we need a modifier on our component to give it a background. So copy this and paste it, then say dash dash BG. Inside here now, uh, let's add some dummy text. Let's just say decode for example, and we'll get to the rest very shortly. But 
I want to apply some CSS for our background modifier. So in the CSS, let's target under the components. Let's say components uh, dash dash BG. So for the component background, we're going to be saying a padding of 1.5 EM. So basically 1.5 times the current font size. We're going to say background and make this RGBA 255, 255, 255, then 0.2 for 20% opaque white. We can then say a box shadow. Let's make this a 0, 0, and then 5px, then RGBA once again, this time 0, 0, 0, and then 0 0.2, a 20% opaque black. Then lastly, we can say border dash radius and make this 10px. If I save this and go back in the browser, we have this curved, uh, nice background uh, container. Okay, so it's kind of you know looking a lot better, but we need to now style up the title here and of course the paragraph. So going back in the HTML, let's specify a new div in place of this decode. I'm going to say right here a new H2 with a class of timeline underscore underscore title. Inside here we can just say for example. Uh, published first video. Okay, then let's make a new paragraph right under here. We can say timeline underscore underscore paragraph. Inside here we can just say for example, uh, I might just copy and paste my text from earlier. Okay, so paste that right there and save this. In the browser we have something like this, but of course it's a bit wide and a bit of unnecessary space between the title and the edge of that container. So let's go in the CSS and just fix that up. So Right down here, we can just say timeline underscore underscore title. For this, we can say a margin of zero. And then we can say a font size of 1.15 EM, so 15% uh, or 1.15% of the current uh, font size. Then say a font weight of bold. This is optional because, of course, by default, a H2 is probably going to be bold, but it's just here for a bit of extra protection. I'm going to save this right here and go back in the browser and we have something like this. So a bit smaller text, but also I'm going to be targeting the timeline underscore underscore paragraph right here uh, just to give us a line height. So we're going to say right here, line dash height of 1.5. So now it's going to be a little bit easier to read with a bit more space between those lines there. So now we are very close to being complete with our, our timeline. but uh, we can see here that, of course, um, we don't have a finishing circle like we have down here. So let's add that in right now. So going back inside the text editor, um, you know what? Actually, I might I might leave that part to the very to to the very uh, end. Okay, so let's let's skip this bottom circle and instead just move on to adding a second uh, event. That's probably better. So if I go back in the HTML. Now that we have our date on the left side here, we need to now basically do the exact same thing but in reverse for the next event down. So for this one, uh, we're going to be firstly specifying the actual, um, you know, uh, contents or the, uh, you know, event description. So let's just copy this and go down here, which gives us something like this. Perfect, right? So now let's add a timeline middle once again just down here and then in the third area we can just specify the date so paste that right down there so now if I save this and go back we have something like this so we need to now specify uh, or basically remove that dash dash right modifier to our date so back in here let's remove this dash dash right and now we can see it defaults back to the left side right here perfect um, and we can now move on to, of course, adding in that final circle and touching up the spacing on the bottom. So to specify that final circle, we can make a copy of this point. Then we can say right here, dash dash bottom. So this timeline point bottom, let's copy this and go in the CSS. And we're going to say right up here, uh, timeline point dash dash bottom. So for this, we can just say a top of initial. So basically just resetting that top property uh, that we set up here. Then we're going to say bottom and make this zero. So now if I save this and go back in the browser, 
it is now on the bottom right down there. Perfect. Okay, so the very last thing to apply here is going to be to basically remove this extra space right here which is presented by the margin on this timeline component. So for that, we need to basically just apply a new class to our timeline component. So both of these timeline components right here, the last two, we can just say copy and we can say dash dash bottom. Okay, so now for our component bottom on the last event, um, in the CSS, we can just simply uh, copy this modifier, go down here. So for our dash dash bottom, okay, we can just say a margin bottom of zero. Very straightforward. Let's save this now, and we can see that we now we know we no longer have uh, space on the bottom here between our timeline component and the bottom of the timeline. So there you go guys, that's how to create a timeline using HTML and CSS. Thanks for watching. If today's video helped you out, drop a like and subscribe to Decode and I'll see you in the next video.